Welcome to my Studio A. I'm Torsen, Ableton Certified Trainer, and I'm working alongside Warp Academy to give you a first look at Ableton 10's brand new synthesizer, Wavetable. To do so, we'll be creating a custom patch together, so let's go ahead and get started. To celebrate the launch of Live 10, our crew at Warp Academy has made a new course for you. It's called Warp 10, and it's the absolute fastest way to get up to speed with the new instruments, effects, and power features of Live 10. You get expert video tutorials by our team of Ableton certified trainers, plus sweet downloads like project files, samples, and synth patches to amp up your library. Oh, and did we mention that right now, for a limited time, it's totally free to sign up. Click the link, bounce over to Warp Academy, and it's yours. It takes 30 seconds to sign up, and you get lifetime access. Without further delay, let's take a listen to the synth we're about to create, first in context with some music, and then I'll click solo. As you can hear, the synth has a wide variety of emotional possibilities, so let's jump straight in and start crafting this sound. Let's create a new instance of Wavetable by navigating to the browser, then to Instruments, and drag Wavetable to an empty space here, and then we'll borrow some MIDI from the track we just heard so we have a loop playing and we can listen to the initialized Wavetable synth. Click Space to stop playback, and let's tidy up the screen by closing the browser here. One of the three takeaways I hope you gain from this video is an appreciation for this toggle that spreads all of the controls over the screen so you don't have to navigate the various tabs to get at the specific controls you were looking for. Frankly, this is an indispensable feature for this synth, and the next thing I want you to walk away with is an understanding of the different sections and what they're responsible for. If you've ever seen me do a synthesizer review before, then you know I oversimplify everything and I break an entire synth into three basic parts. We have the oscillator section, which generates a lush sound that we're going to shape. We then shape that sound in the filter section, and ultimately we have a control section or a variety of control sections that control the various parameters of both the oscillator section and the filter section. So again, we're overgeneralizing here, but this should help orient you as we get at designing this synthesizer. If you are familiar with other forms of synthesis, especially analog or subtractive synthesis, most of this looks pretty familiar already, except possibly for this top section, which is what makes a wavetable synthesizer absolutely unique. Let's take a look at oscillator 1 since it is the only one sending signal to the filter as indicated by the on-off toggle in the top left-hand side of each oscillator. We also see four basic waveforms depicted in the center from bottom to top, sine, triangle, sawtooth, and square. Whatever shape the gold waveform is in is what is actually being sent to the filter. So watch what happens when I drag from bottom to top the sine wave morphs into a triangle, the triangle morphs into a sawtooth, and the sawtooth into a square. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like as I move through this wavetable. I made a point to stop between two of the waveforms so that you could see and hear that the signal being sent to the filter was inheriting features both visibly and audibly from the two closest waveforms. I can't overemphasize how powerful this is, since the wavetable position can be mapped to almost anything including an LFO, an envelope, or manually automated. Just to recap what we've covered so far, we now understand the various parts of the synthesizer, including the wavetable section itself, that creates sound by morphing between wavetables that we load onto the screen. But what if we want to control how we move through the wavetable with an LFO? This literally couldn't get any easier. We simply click the parameter to make it show up in the matrix below. Then we cross-reference that with the control that we want to apply. And we click and drag up or down depending on how much we want that control to influence the effect. Or use your keyboard to dial in a specific number, either positive or negative. The LFO itself can send control voltage waveforms that include sine, triangle, sawtooth square, and noise. Let's add an attack so that the influence of the LFO is not instantaneous. Now when I hold a note, we see it takes a full second for the LFO to gain its full potency. 
But wait, there's more. This is only one of two wavetables available to us. Let's shut oscillator 1 off and turn on oscillator 2 to show you some of the more intricate features of the wavetable oscillators. You may have noticed we're looking at very simplistic waveforms. That's because presently we are looking inside of the basics category at the most basic shapes wavetable that exists. If we select a different wavetable, we see that everything gets more complicated with more harmonics that probably provide a more lush sound. But you should know where the basics exist because frankly, they come in really handy. Moving on to a different flavor entirely, let's explore some of the sounds in the retro category. It defaults with echoes, which looks fancy, but it's not what I'm looking for. I want more sawtooth waves. So let's use the sweep saw 2 and give it a listen as we drag through the wavetable manually. And as before, let's control the wavetable position selector with an LFO, but this time we'll use LFO 2 so I can show you some other parameters that you might want to play about with. I'm going to select Sawtooth and point out that the rate is presently set to 1 Hz. We can change this to follow the pattern of your music by clicking this musical icon. So now we can adjust the rate to something more rhythmically appropriate to the song. And check this out, I can even alter the shape of a waveform to make it even more customized. I like where that's going. Let me turn this oscillator off and show you one more hidden oscillator on the far left hand side. We see we have a sub and at default it is going to be an octave lower than the other oscillators. We can set it to two octaves, one octave, or in unison with the other oscillators. Tone in the case of this sub acts very similarly to the wavetable position selector. On the low end of the spectrum we have a sine wave and on the high end of the spectrum we hear something that is much like a saw square hybrid. Now let's add some phasey comb filtering by detuning the second oscillator just slightly. <sighs> but wouldn't it be cool if I could move the whole wavetable in and out of phase using a parameter like, I don't know, an LFO? Obviously we can do this. Click detune to select it in the matrix, then dial in point 0.1. And let's experiment a little bit with the detuning of both oscillators. But I'm not really impressed with what I hear using the same LFO. Let's use LFO2. And that's a really nice result. The sound is rather brash, so let's dial it back using our filter, and we'll add some resonance, and we'll change up the slope and the filter type here. We could push the signal harder into the filter, but in this case, I really want to maintain the delicate feel, so I will choose to not do that. Instead, let's move over to an often overlooked feature that in this case adds the finishing polish to this sound. Here we can duplicate the voicing that the synth has created from 2 to 8 times and play it back in various unison modes. Here we'll select Shimmer as the mode and play back 8 voices and set the amount to 0 so you can hear just how quickly this effect will change the sound. Overall, I think we've achieved what we're looking for, except we want the attack to be a little more percussive. To do this, I'm going to click on the frequency knob of the filter so that it can add in some higher harmonics based on signal received from envelope 3. We give envelope 3 a significant amount of control over the frequency, and then we simply pull back the release and sustain of the envelope. Voila, it's perfect. <laughs> to place a cherry on top, let's add some delay to make it sound retro synthy. Bearing in mind that our BPM is incredibly fast, so I will dial back the delay time to be a bit longer. And that pretty much nailed the sound we were looking to create. 
if you liked what we covered in this video, we've got lots more where that came from in our free Warp 10 course. Rather than wasting your precious studio time sifting through a sea of tutorials, we've put everything you want to know about Live 10 in one place. Our entire team of Ableton certified trainers has spent the last three months making this custom course just for you. Hop on the fast track and learn Live 10 at warp speed. Click on the link, jet over to Warp Academy, and you'll get instant lifetime access.